Hello and welcome to this video vlog. Today I would like to talk about uh, that sense of desperateness that uh, we humans have to be involved in a relationship. And uh, I just want to reflect on this issue, on this situation, as to where is it coming from? Why are we so desperate to want to be with somebody in our lives, to have somebody in our lives that fulfills us and makes us feel happy? Well, first we need to understand that um, we have our instinctual nature to procreate um, for, you know, the behalf of the species, so we don't disappear. So instinctively, we ha instinctively we have this uh, sexual desire to be with another, so we can procreate and continue our life as species, and uh, that can uh, get mixed with our feelings and desires to share a life with somebody else. We are all interdependent, we are all connected, and by being interdependent, we, it reflects that we need each other, we depend on each other for, for life, like we cannot embrace everything and do everything, we always need others to help us with things that we are not um, good at or that we can use some help. So we are, in a way, quite interdependent. Now, if um, we are seeking happiness, which it's something that we all desire and we all want, it's a, basically it's a natural state uh, for, for us to, to be in happiness, to desire happiness. But we are seeking that happiness through another. Okay, we, and, and I've seen in, in the Twin Flame communities that um, understanding that this is the most powerful connection we can ever experience, we get even more desperate to wanna be with that person because we think, okay, I found somebody like, like so unique in my life and I wanna be with that person. But we are just uh, continuing to understand and behave this relationship, which is spiritual in nature, from our accustomed, conditioned perspective of relationships. If what we have learned about relationships is so good and so right on, why are there so many divorces in the world? Why are there so many conflicts between people? Because we put so much expectations on the relationship. Obviously, we meet somebody, we fall in love, and then we believe by projecting this love onto the other person, that this person, the person I'm projecting love to, is gonna make me happy forever after, you know? And that's not fair for that person, and not fair for myself, because what is this mirroring? What is this re bringing us back to look at? Mainly, we are seeking outside of ourselves that happiness. We want somebody else to give us the happiness that we can only find inside. As we evolve spiritually, as we grow into understanding our own nature, our own spiritual nature, we start fulfilling those needs of love, attention, uh, healing the sense of abandonment and all those issues that we all probably have gone through. Just by relating to ourselves and appreciating humbly our existence. You see, we have ourselves 24 hours a day. The most important, the, the most important relationship we, ca we could ever have is the one with ourselves. The rest of the people come and go through our lives. Even if we want to stay with somebody for the rest of our life, for the rest of our existence, we are all just passengers in this journey of life. 
Death is the only certainty we have when, once we are born. So we are going to part ways. We are going to separate anyway. And we become desperate for fulfilling that desire of, of, of uh, being loved without understanding what loving to oneself means, without reaching to that point of just feeling good with who one is. When one is okay with oneself and loving oneself, there is no need emotional need to be with somebody else we can be and share our lives unattached but that requires a very very high level of vibration very high level of consciousness because our natural state from our ego perspective and human perspective which is human and ego are basically the same as spirit, spiritual state and, and soul are on the same level is attachment because we feel separate because we live separate from each other so as we awake internally to our spirit self and we realize that oneness there's no more separation and so the contentment, the happiness, the joy just comes natural, naturally from this sense of understanding that we are all one. Because, you know, in the spiritual communities we have, yes, we're all one, yeah, we're all united, we're one. But that's theoretical for most of us. Only when we have the experience at an atomic level, at a cellular level, of that oneness, we will really understand what that means. We hold a theory, but theory is only knowledge, maybe. You know, it's not wisdom. Wisdom is when, when we reach that point. And so, let's think about this desperateness that we have for wanting to be with our twin flame, for wanting to be with our soulmate, for wanting to be with somebody else. Why do we need somebody else to make us happy? When that somebody is not there, we're going to suffer. <laughs> suffer is a conditioning of our humanness and our ego state of attachment. So we, we can reach to that level of enjoying the presence of different people in our lives, knowing that they will go at a certain time. We will go. They will go. Only by working internally to reach that understanding in an inner experience of opening our minds, opening our consciousness to higher dimensions, and start living from those dimensions once we really anchor that wisdom. The wisdom comes through experience. It doesn't come through reading a book or even listening to this video, all I can do is just maybe put some seeds of, of uh, reflection, of, of going um, inside. So you can do your own work as I am doing mine and we all have to do our own work. And that's all I can do, just, just maybe make you consider something that might not be considered because we are so immersed in the condition the global consciousness conditioning about what relationships look like we've been shown what they look like and what they are all about since we were born so that's very ingrained in our consciousness we need to kind of break that apart and find what is working from that those ideas and what's not working and then we need to extract the good things and process and overcome the things that are very selfish about relationships of wanting to have somebody, wanting desperately to fulfill my happiness through the presence of somebody else in my life, through the love of somebody else in my life, 
Love is an energy. It's just energy that we can open up to and channel and feel it when it's in our surrounding, but mainly when it's an inner experience. If we open up to the flow of that energy in ourselves, we will feel love just by watching nature, watching our pets, by being with somebody, contemplating that somebody uh, without judgments. It's hard to get to that place. You know, it's, it, it's, it's hard not to be human in, from the ego perspective of humanness <laughs> when that's all we know. So, you know, we, we need to do more inner work and inner work, uh, uh, you know, we can talk about it, but the inner work has to be done, has to go inside and we have to find a way. We have to find a path. We have to uh, obviously learn how to distinguish things inside of ourselves. So we can sort of start seeing from a new perspective, choosing newer ways of relating that are healthier. We live in such dysfunctional world. Come on, that's, that's just look outside to the world how dysfunctional it is. Governed by the power, by the, the, the need to be better than others. That's pure ego. And ego has shown us to, that to stay in the idea that we are ego. It's not the true way to go. It's not bringing any happiness to any of, our, any of us. Happiness will come from the joy of reaching our truth. And we need to create. We need to find and discover the new ways, the new paths that will take us to the new ways of living and coexisting with one another. We have to create that. Out of scratch, knowing nothing about it because we have forgotten everything of what it is to have good relationships in this world with others, not governed by the power of ego, but just from the sweetness, pureness, light and lightness of our soul energy. It's time to awaken to our soul energy. We need it desperately. This world is falling apart because we are not willing to let go of our ego dominance. We can overcome it. We can tame it. That's the most important thing. We can tame our ego. And it requires hard work. That's what I've been saying through working with our ego in our ego nature. We can awaken our soul nature because by taming the impulses of the ego the light starts just shining otherwise those impulses of the ego are just always going to be dominant in our lives they will appear but they will not be dominant anymore when we work and we really really get involved in understanding how we function in our minds in our hearts our emotions the heart has many layers to get to the soul and most of those layers are ego-centered layers. So just an, an invitation for you to consider uh, other ways of relating and uh, understanding where the desperateness to be with somebody comes from. Well, please, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. And we have also a face, Facebook page and um, a bilingual Instagram and a bilingual Twitter. Thank you so much for the time you've given to listen to this. I hope it has helped in any way to bring new possibilities into your uh, world and uh, work through them as much as you can for the better of yourself and the world. Until then, bye-bye.